male prisoners self-identifying as females are raping inmates, female inmates, and prison staff members in some locations. Yes, these self-identifying females are really males with a penis. They have not had their sex change or operation as of yet, and they're still being moved in under new laws, under new transgender laws, with female inmates. Where is this happening? Well, as recent as August 5, 2021, California has seven allegations of rape in a female uh, jail, and one is pregnant, claiming it is from a transgender. Maybe more, possibly more, uh, will be pregnant, it states in the article, okay? Uh, investigation is still going on. Everything is still pending. Um, I saw some comments under there that um, some uh, f women's uh, advocates, female prisoners uh, groups, advocates, have begged Florida not to implement this pro-gender law. It is unsafe to put these transgenders in with female inmates. Some of them are six foot two, 250 pounds, and still have their male genitalia. Now, I'm no psychologist, biologist, whatever you want to call it, but if you stick someone in, in there with a woman who still has her genitalia, and they're born males, but they're identifying as females, do you think nature at some point might take over and they're assaulting and raping these inmates? There are reports in the United Kingdom now, in England, they're, they're, they're having trouble with this as well, that uh, staff, prison staff members have been raped by these um, uh, transgender identifying as females, self-identifying as females that are actually males that still have their penis. You know, California responded to that group uh, to please stop doing this to the female organization. They responded by passing out condoms and resources for pregnancy. That That just doesn't make sense to me. You're not going to try to solve the problem you're, you know, my opinion only, it's almost like you're promoting the problem. Well, we gave them condoms and some resources for pregnancy. You know, the last time I checked in the United States, sex is not allowed in the jails and prisons. There is no consensual sex. It, you know, inmates may have consensual sex, but it's not allowed. And if a staff member has sex with an inmate, even if the staff member claims the inmate was consensual, that doesn't matter. You're using your position of authority to gain something. It's a third degree felony for a staff member to have sex with inmates. But now I guess under the pro-gender law, we can just put um, uh, transgender uh, inmates in with the females and the ones that self-identify as a female because it's their right. But now we have females placed in danger bodily danger, uh, uh, danger of rape, danger of physical abuse, mental abuse. So who's protecting the female side of the house? Um, we have some people stating, well, you know, we can't say that uh, you can't always believe uh, uh, an allegation of rape. Well, there's, you know, in prison, sometimes the allegations are false. Yes. I'll tell you what, though, if the females are being impregnated by a transgender, we can easily find out how true that is, right? We can do some DNA testing, find out who the father of the baby is. Uh, we'll see what happens with that case in California as time goes on. My concern is, is safety for staff and inmates. Um, there's always dangers in prison, and then we have those people that always say, don't go to prison if you don't want to risk the danger. Well, I understand. I mean, I don't, I know what they're saying, but listen, people go to jail or prison for a number of reasons. Not all of them are because they harm somebody on the street. Uh, it's, they could have harmed themselves being stupid with pain pills and, and, and drugs, you know. But 
What I'm saying is, it is our duty to protect everyone behind the prison walls. We're not hired to be vigilantes. We're not hired to make a, uh, a, an environment unsafe for inmates. We're there to be firm, fair, and consistent. And we have to protect everyone behind the walls. Just as much as we protect a prison staff member or fellow officer, if an inmate is trying to commit suicide, if an inmate is being raped, it is our duty to step in and stop that crime. It almost seems like the way things are going, though, with this pro-gender law, we're placing female inmates in, in danger. Now, do you know why these uh, male prisoners who self-identify as females want to get to a women's jail or prison? Because they're scared to death. They're being harassed and raped by male inmates. Don't believe me? Just check out the statistics, folks. I'm not going to sit here and prove myself to you. Just check out the statistics. These self-identifying as female uh, male inmates are being raped by male inmates. So because they don't want to be raped, injured, and harassed, they want to go to be with the females because they want to be a female. But what are they doing, some of them? The exact same thing they ran away from. They're raping female inmates. And according to the United Kingdom, in some cases, they've raped prison staff members. You know, if you got that penis and you're a six foot two male and you want to be a female real bad, you just can't get away from nature though. Nature prevails. Mother nature takes over. Does not give anyone the right to rape anybody or harm anybody. In my opinion, if we keep going in this direction, we're just making more lawsuits because by the way, in Illinois, in California, in Michigan, in the United Kingdom, those four that I know of, that I've researched, lawsuits all over the place, taxpayers' money being eaten up for these lawsuits. And if they win these lawsuits, more taxpayers' money will be eaten up. There's even been allegations that female inmates have been told you were not raped this didn't happen. You understand. They're being pressured to back out of their allegations. If that's happening by any investigators, that's very, very sad. Because as an investigator in our prison system, you need to be fair, impartial, and unbiased. You don't pick a side. You don't work to make the administration look good. You don't... Uh, go to the inmate side either and work hard to make them look good. You let the chips fall where they may. You investigate. You be fair and impartial. And if there's evidence that somebody was raped, you better make sure the report gets out. If there's evidence that it was a false allegation, you better make sure that the evidence is there as well and get that report out. Either way, but if any investigator is trying to tip the scales towards the administrative side or the inmate side, they need to be investigated. Just wanted to throw that out there because all these things I'm talking about today warrant an internal investigation, probably an outside investigation. It needs to be sent to the state attorney for review after investigation and let the state attorney make the final decision on whether or not a female inmate was raped by a transgender, okay? This is all time consuming. Money, money, money is coming out of the taxpayer's pocket, folks, for all these things going on I'm talking about today. Not, not just the money, but the safety of many, many inmates and prison staff. We can't start letting our prisons get out of our hands and just let people decide today I'm a female and I have my rights and under the new progender law, I want to be moved to a jail or I will sue the state or the county, which has been done. Also look up the statistics on that. Many of these male prisoners identifying as female prisoners 
are suing the states and jails and winning, saying they have the right to be what they want to be and they have the right to be in the jail and they need to get away from being raped by the male inmates, as I mentioned earlier. It's just a crazy thing going on here with this. But no matter which way you look at it, whether they stay with the male inmates, they're being injured and raped, these, these self-identifying transgenders, or if you put them in with the females, now the females are being raped. But nobody wants to consider, consider putting them together separately, the transgenders, because now that's going to be a violation of rights. What do we do, folks? I'm, I, you know, I don't have an answer for it. I'm just throwing all these things out there that are going on now with the uh, transgender issue. But there are uh, transgenders, you know, that do not have their male genitalia anymore. So the rape issue should be solved. But why are we moving inmates? I guess is my question at the end here. Why are we moving inmates who still have their penis in with the female inmates because of the new laws that are coming in, because of their rights, because judges are saying inmate wins the case, must be moved in with the females. You know, where do, where do we go for help? The organizations concerned about the safety of female inmates are trying their best, but they're losing. They're losing the battle. Now, I threw this all out there for food for thought. Please, if somebody has some ideas or thoughts, place them at the bottom of this video. Because the main reason I hold these things, as I say in my uh, little summary of my channel here, True Prison Stories, we tell the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you don't like the truth, I'm sorry. Most people uh, don't like people who tell the truth, so I tell what happens in prison on all sides. Um, so uh, please give us your thoughts on what's going on here and what you think we should do. Or will it just get worse? Thank you, everybody, for watching True Prison Stories. Gary York.